Hey, good morning everyone and welcome to ShortSalePowerHour.com. My partner Kevin Kaufman's actually too busy working right now, so I've told him just to click play and record and uh, that I'd go ahead and just handle today's episode while he's back there in the background working. But hey, welcome to ShortSalePowerHour.com. My name's Fred Weaver. Again, partner Kevin Kaufman's in the background. He might join us in a few minutes after maybe, he gets maybe done not. playing on his Facebook account. Facebook.com slash Kevin L. Kaufman. You too can become one of his 3,000 intimate friends. I'm not quite the 3,000 friend, but I'm getting close. Anyway, folks, hey guys, um, hope you enjoyed yesterday's episode with Jay Papazon. We were so privileged to uh, be able to film that episode and have Jay on the show. So thank you again, Jay. I know you're out there watching. And hey, today we're going to pick up on a topic. Uh, we get asked a lot of times, uh, you know, what happens, you know, with my file? How does it get submitted for approval? And kind of what happens after what Kevin and I like to call day 30. So I'm going to jump right in. If you've never watched any of our episodes that we filmed in the past, we actually filmed those back in January of this year, all around the first 30 days and what we do in a transaction. I uh, encourage you strongly to do a little search here on Short Sale Power Hour and find all those videos. But I'm actually going to talk around a topic of the coordinator and how all that works. So understand, guys, for most of you out there, um, some of you may get this, some of you may not, but you'll hear something in here I'm sure that you've never heard before. Understand that you know, you've know you got to do what we call detective work when it comes to a short sale. Hey, do you mind if I join you, do you? I guess not. I'm All talking right. about detective Woo, what work. What are we doing? Is this short sale for hour? Yeah, it is. Dot so com? detective work, guys, is what Kevin and I, what we mean by that is asking really good questions. And what that looks like is every lender after a BPO has been ordered, after your package has been verified at the bank, right. every lender has a different process. And so determining what that process is and how it looks and being able to manage the bank's system right. becomes vital to your transaction. Now, I just said some things right there that are probably contrary to the way that some of our viewers out there are doing short sales right now. A lot of you are calling the bank and listening to what they have to say and then trusting well, yeah, that the, the bank's mistake. response to, well, this is how we set the negotiator up, this is how many days afterwards we get the BPO done and all that, right. and you're just trusting that the process is going to work. And I'm going to challenge that as an agent that's doing short sales, the best way to succeed in them is actually to take on a babysitter role of the bank. Well, I mean, that's essentially what you are. Is you're, Here's the deal. We can't set the bank's guidelines for them. No. We can't do that. But what we can do is we can understand what they are. So from an internal perspective, how does the bank expect for this process to go? Yeah. Meaning how what do they want to see happen? Knowing that that doesn't happen most of the time, but it's what they want, it's what the higher ups expect and want to happen, and then managing them to that. Managing the the, the employees on the ground level, the people actually doing the work managing them to the expectations that their own management's not doing. Absolutely, so like uh, one simple concept would be getting a coordinator assigned. Every bank has a period of time in which their goal is to get the coordinator assigned. Right. Now, whether or not they're gonna share that with you all the time is up to them, but good detective work will let you uncover what their expectations are. Yes. And if you don't like what you're hearing, well, you call back and you get different answers, or you just immediately escalate and say, there's no way we can wait 60 days for this file to be assigned to a negotiator right. and 180 days for you guys to submit it for approval. Although, now, that are, that's how some banks roll. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not claiming that we should just go escalating on every, every time we hear something we don't like, but what I am saying is that it's important that when you're calling the bank after your package is verified, after your BPO is done, you want to find out, hey, how many coordinators are going to touch this file? How's that process going to work? Right. What does that look like? Who's going to be the one that actually submits my file for approval? Who's actually approving yeah, the file? Yeah, there's a thought. Who actually approves it? Yeah. How does the handoff work between the first negotiator and if there's a phase two negotiator? How does that handoff work and how can I as the agent babysit or monitor my file to make sure that handoff from negotiator one to negotiator two goes as planned. I'm gonna jump in there for a second because you just said a lot of different things. I said a lot. There's, there's so many different moving parts. You said more than they heard. I guarantee that. It's okay. Um, here's the deal, guys. As, as my pastor always says, I'm preaching better than you're listening. Wow. Um, so, he, Fred just said a whole lot. Just okay? threw you off. You huh? did, but I'm back. He said a whole lot, and some of it you may not have heard, some of it you may not understand, some of it you might have gone, well, why is that important? Well, number one is, I've already said it, it's because so you can manage the bank to their, to their expectations, not just yours, but their own expectations internally. But number two, guys, and this is the part that's often overlooked in our industry, and, and even in this niche of short sales, 
is the more you can understand about a, a particular bank, the more you can understand about the process, who approves the file, how many people touch my file, what are, what's, the, um, what's the guidelines on this file, do they have delegated authority, does this have to go to management, does it go to a committee, does it go to the investor, is there mortgage insurance, who's the mortgage insurance company, the more well, you can... Well, that's like uh, 10 weeks of short sale power episodes right, right there. The more understanding you have, the easier this becomes. Yeah. This short sales, you guys, I got news for you. They do offer a challenge from time to time, but by all means, they are not hard. We've, I mean, we haven't closed 90% of our short sales because, you know, for no reason, guys. It's because we understand what's going on. We've taken the time to ask the stupid questions. And I say stupid questions because I will on purpose ask stupid questions. Basic questions that I may think I know the answer to already, but I want to elicit want to, a response and yeah. gather information from the Absolutely. person on the other end That's of the key. phone. So I think I've, I've been in this episode. Well, yeah, I, I, wow, you must have been sensing what I was thinking because I was getting a lot more airtime there before you, while you were at your computer. So um, what I want you guys to walk away with today is just this. Understand playing a detective is important every time you talk to the bank. Finding out how their process works, what the expectations are. And then babysitting or monitoring or watching over, I don't care what term you want to use, but managing the file and the transaction to make sure that it's all moving appropriately. And when it's not, raising red flags, escalating and doing things to say, look, you're not managing my file according to your process and standards. You've got to understand out there, guys, that they have more files than they can deal with. They have more files than they can possibly approve on a monthly basis. So if you want your file to be at the top of the stack or looked at or even responded to, you're going to have to do some things differently than everybody else is. So hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. For those of you that are watching us here in the Florida area, we will be in the Miami, Florida area tomorrow. That's right, Thursday. Friday will be in Jacksonville, Monday in Tampa, and Tuesday in Orlando, Florida. So come on out and join us. We look forward to seeing you soon. And check our events page on Short Sale Power Hour out for some upcoming dates in Tennessee, Georgia, and Maryland. All right, Kevin's ready to do the clap. He's uh, he's over there doing this number because I keep pretending like I'm about to close and I'm not. So on three, one, two, three. Short, Short sale, sale Power Hour. Short Sale Power Hour. Crush it.